Six days in Fallujah is finally here after a long wait, and here's what you need to know. Six Days in Fallujah was originally announced back in 2009. It was then almost immediately scrapped due to political reasonings, which we're not going to get into. But then in 2017, it was re-picked up by two different developers, Highwire and Victura. And then in 2021, they announced a full reveal of the game. And then just recently, we got the announcement that Early Access will be opening up to Steam and PC on June 22nd. Now, the fact that it took 14 years to get here is pretty amazing. Uh, I think it would not be overstepping to say that this might be the most anticipated tactical first-person shooter in recent memory, and it's just wonderful that we're actually getting it finally. I know a lot of people assumed that this wouldn't come out because of how things went down in 2009, but it is here, and it's also coming to consoles. While there is no official console release date as of yet, uh, the plan is to get this out to those platforms in 2024. Um, it's also coming out for next and past gen, which I think is interesting, considering um, some of the choices made by other more recent tactical first-person shooters that have released on console. Hell Let Loose decided not even to go on to past gen, which I think was probably a good idea. Sorry, past gen people. Um, Insurgency Sandstorm decided to do that, and this game feels like it might be a little closer to that, A, that atmosphere, but also the size, uh, map-wise, things like that, to that game. And there were a lot of issues with Insurgency on past gen, so I'm hoping that the developers here have gotten a plan to figure out any challenges they might come with porting this to past gen particularly, but so far things look really nice. Now when we get down to the actual game, there are a lot of really cool features in this game, some of which you would expect from a tactical shooter, but done differently. The way voice comms work is pretty clever. I feel like there are local and radio chat uh, situations that sound unique to each other, which is really neat. Health and movement systems that feel as real as any tactical or milsim style game that I've ever seen so far. Incredibly high quality lighting and shadows that really make you feel like you're actually in this place. Um, you also have procedurally generated environments, meaning that if you play the same mission several times, the map will look completely different every time you play it, giving it the potential for high replayability uh, down the road. Perhaps the most intriguing thing about this game is that it is based on real experiences and the stories that were shared by real soldiers that fought in Iraq during 2004, during the bloodiest conflict of the entire war. This is a game that is more than a game, and it is doing something that I think a lot of fans of this genre have yet to really see done in such a specific, concise, and accurate way. There is no way that you can recreate or fully understand what soldiers in a conflict like this had to go through. The fact that so many soldiers that were actually there are behind this game and helped work on its creation should give you some amount of understanding about how good of a job the development team has done bringing this thing to life. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm looking forward to bringing you some gameplay content here uh, coming up very soon. I'm going to be joining my buddy Chris T, and we're going to be diving into early access here as soon as it comes out. Thank you guys again so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great week.